topic we will try our best to unfold a lot of things this morning and our topic for the morning is meat eating and the spirit of prophecy meat eating and the spirit of prophecy so please um call your neighbor call your friend call your brother let them know that pastor's corner is on and today it gonna be hot Today, man, we're going to be on fire um, this morning. We have two solid gentlemen this morning who would be guiding us. I will be the facilitator, and these will be the men who God has chosen for this morning. To my immediate right, we have Pastor Kwame Diabo, the pastor of the East Central District. Um, fresh back to the Isle of Spice where everything is nice. He was one of the missionaries um, to the Ivory Coast. Am I correct, Pastor? Um, and he had a very good experience back there. Pastor, welcome back to Thank Grenada. You. You, um, the best place in the world. Amen. And the place that has um, one, one of the places with the lowest COVID counts. Amen. All right, so we praise God for that. Then um, next to Pastor Kwame Diabo is a great man of faith. Uh, we have Pastor Edward Guillaume. He is our health, our stewardship and trust services um, director. Also, he pastors the Church of New Hampshire. Um, Pastor Guillaume, welcome um, this morning. Pastor Diabo, welcome this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, make them feel welcome um, by just typing welcome in the chat. Make my pastors this morning feel welcome. Just type morning, um, sorry, welcome to them in the chat. We have Sister um, Shelly Lewis saying good morning. We have Stephanie Mitchell Max saying good morning. We have Frederica saying good morning. We have um, thank you. Yes, um, Aline, thank you for making them um, feel um, welcome by saying welcome. We have um, Rochelle. We have um, Crisilda. Thank you, um, Antonia. Thank you, Shelly. Um, pastors, the viewers are making you feel welcome this Amen. morning. Amen. Um, saints of God, thank remember, we are going through the discussion meat eating and the Bible. And let me tell you, man, this thing will be exciting. I can't wait to hear what Pastor Guillaume has to say about meat eating. I can't wait to hear what Pastor Diablo has to say about meat eating this morning. Um, I don't know if they'll tell us um, throw away our chicken or I don't know if they'll tell us keep it. But um, by God's grace, they will lead us well um, this morning, the gentlemen. Thank you so much, Rosalind and... Um, we have Frederica and Danny. Thank you so much for making our pastors feel welcome um, this morning. Before we go any further, you see, when we are dealing with biblical stuff, we need to depend on the bigger boss. He is the one who directs our lives in every aspect as Christians, especially when it comes to discerning his word. So at this time, we ask you if you can, just bow your heads with us. If you cannot, we, God understands. And let's ask God's presence here today. Loving Father, Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your mercies. And Father, as we are here discussing meat eating and the spirit of prophecy, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would guide us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you grant us wisdom and allow this discussion today through the power of the Holy Spirit. Allow it, Lord, to be an encouragement for somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Um, this morning as we begin, I just want to remind us to um, keep the COVID protocols um, especially we in Grenada and you are all around the world. Um, please, let's pray that God protects our family, keeps our family safe, Amen. but we do what we are asked to do. Um, when we are obedient, actually the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. So therefore, when we are obedient, God's blessings covers 
um, covers us. So I encourage us um, to be obedient, follow the protocols, sanitize, wear your mask, um, social distance um, as much um, as possible. All right, let's keep the let's get the show rolling. But before I ask my first question. Before I ask my first question, man, there is something happening, um, Brother George, on the island of Grenada very soon. Something massive, something gigantic, something super califragilistic, espialidocious. So, Brother Leroy George, tell us, man, play this ad so we could know what gigantic, ginormous thing that is coming up on the island of Grenada. Follow these steps to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Step 1. Find the YouTube app on your device. Step 2. Select the app, then tap on the search icon. Step 3. Type in Mission Live GND and complete your search. Step 4. Select our Mission Live GND channel and subscribe after you have successfully subscribed tap the little bell icon and select all you will be notified whenever we go live if you are still experiencing difficulties in finding our live stream please tap on videos and you will be directed to our most recent video feeds thank you for subscribing to help you get started with your film production. Step 1. Form your team. Ensure you have on your team a script writer, actors, a producer, a videographer, and an editor. Step 2. Write the script. Remember to consult the rules as you write. The rules can be found on the following Facebook page. Public Campus Ministries Grenada Conference. Step 3. Decide your scene selections. Choose the right time of day and the most appropriate locations to film. Step 4. Use different camera movements. Pan up. Pan down. Pan across. Zoom in. Zoom out. You can also use wide shots and tight shots. Step five, use appropriate sound effects. Audio should be loud enough and clear. Sound effects should match the message and mood of the scene. Step six, editing. Transition should be smooth and creative. Step seven, submit your production to Adventist Media gnd at gmail.com It's an event that you cannot afford to miss. So therefore, <clears throat> we as pastors here, we encourage our young people to support. And we want to encourage you, parents, to encourage your children to be part of that mega fest program. Now, today, let me start with the great men in Zion. Great men, I'm bowling the first ball. And it was meat eating ever prohibited by God. Whatever your answer is, explain with biblical support. All right, Pastor, it's good to be here to share with the listeners and viewers on this program. And I just want to extend greetings to all of you online. 
and welcome to this very interesting topic this morning. Now, in answering the question, when we go to the beginning, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29, and Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18, we we'll see here that God's intention is his perfect will to us, his perfect will. So when I refer to the perfect will, God's perfect will, it speaks here about God's original, the original diet that God um, had for us that consisted of nuts, fruits, vegetables, and grains. Now, when we move to Leviticus chapter 11, we'll see God's permissive will. So, in Leviticus chapter 11, he decided even before the flood, a matter of fact, God decided even before the flood in Genesis chapter 7, verse 2 and 3, he decided what creatures are clean and what were unclean for human consumption. So that's in Leviticus chapter 11, we'll see God's permissive will. And in the same chapter, Leviticus chapter 11, we'll also see God's prohibited will. So even though God, God would have distinguished what is clean and what is unclean, but here God is saying that meats that are unclean are an abomination. We should not even touch it or eat it. And uh, we can also compare here Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 to 18. We won't go into it, but you can read it for yourself. When it speaks about the same unclean food, the swine and the mouse and so on. Um, so here God is saying to us that even though he would have permitted meat eaten, we must be mindful that there is what is clean and that which is unclean. All right. So, um, Pastor, we'll come back to that in a bit. Just want to say hello to um, Marcelli and Carol and Hamilton and Brenda and Cassandra and Desmond. Thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, we'll try our best um, to answer. So therefore, Pastor, what I'm getting from you this morning for the first question is, yes, God had um, prohibited us from eating certain types of meat, um, but some we can eat. All right. Um, All right. Pastor Diabo, do you have something contrary to that or you want to support that? No, no I, I, I don't have anything contrary to the, to the fact. Um, uh, rather, I support uh, Pastor Guillaume. And uh, it, it comes straight from the word. And if I, if I were to contradict him, I'd be contradicting the word. So uh, God established clean meats for us to eat. And he prohibited unclean meats that, that we should not partake of unclean meats. But he allowed us to eat clean meats as is described in Leviticus 11. And also you can find it in Deuteronomy chapter 14. All right. And uh, mind you, that that was that was after the flood. That's right. right. Because after the flood, there was no vegetation. Mm -hmm. All right. So here, God would have permitted the eating of meat as an emergency diet. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, it is so interesting that you know, an emergency doesn't last forever. Amen. Okay. So we still have meat eaten today. So, so you say before <laughs> um, the. COVID vaccine was given for emergency use. God had already <laughs> given meat eating as an emergency for emergency use. Have mercy. <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Yeah, but it's good to have fun together. It's good to have fun together. It's good to have fun together. Now, all right. So I am getting, pastors, that you're saying, um, and we are discussing meat eating and the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So as Seventh-day Adventists, you believe, according to Scripture, that God prohibits certain meats yes. to be eaten. Yes. All right. But why is it that the Seventh-day Adventist church does not promote meat eating as a preferred choice? Because if the Bible says you can eat, 
Yes. But why isn't the Seventh Adventist Church promoting, you know, eat the fowl and eat the fish and, you know, eating all of it? Mm. Why isn't the Adventist Church promoting that as a preferred choice? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> no. The Seventh Adventist Church um, does not promote meat as a preferred choice in regards to diet. The reason is because we have been given uh, health laws and uh, God expects for us to live a healthy lifestyle. And also, we should have a good quality of life. So, <clears throat> we have been given eight laws of health. And when we speak here about nutrition, so um, it speaks about new start. So you have the new start, N E W S T A R T. Mm -hmm. It's an acronym. And when we speak about the N, which is for nutrition, mm -hmm. we are actually speaking about God's original diet, mm -hmm. which is a plant based diet. Mm -hmm. So, as seven Adventists, while God would have allowed the eating of meat, we have to ensure that as we promote, as we promote, we go back to the original. That's right. That's in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29 and Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18 because our bodies are the temple of God. Amen. Yeah? So Amen. therefore it means that whatever we eat, whatever we drink, we should do all to the glory of God. Amen. Yeah? Amen. So for health reasons, we must, be, we must be mindful that even today, that science is not proven that a plant-based di plan diet, particularly one that contains nuts, grains, fruits, and vegetables, mm -hmm. is the best for health and longevity. Science Amen. is saying this. Amen. Yeah? But, um, Pastor, God is the one who told us to eat it. Yes. Yeah. So if God told us to eat it, it must be good. Yes, yeah. but for health reasons, for health reasons, mm -hmm. um, because no science is saying that meat eating is one of the contributors to many of the CNCDs that we have now, the chronic non-communicable diseases, okay. also known as the lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. And there are some persons who eat meat alone as a meal. Yeah? Okay. So we have to be mindful that even though God would have permitted the eating of meat, but our responsibility as Seventh-day Adventists is to help people to go back to the original diet. And um, as we, we, we proceed, you will see why God is saying to us that we need to go back to the original diet. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Um, just before I take you, um, Pastor um, uh -huh. Diabo, I um, just want to say um, hello to Alicia Stevens. Um, we have Elsa Watson watching from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, good stuff. Share it. And my friend Kenya Benjamin. Um, man, thank you so much for um, joining us. Um, we have Richard Nichols. Thank you, sir. And we have Magdalene watching. Magdalene, thank you. Thank you. I think we have been, ha we have been having a good discussion so mm -hmm. far. And um, notice what Pastor is telling us this morning. He's sharing with us an important word he um, allowed. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it was God's divine will for us to be meat eaters. Not at all. Um, but because of sin coming to the picture, he allowed it. That's powerful. Pastor. Well, uh, I, I agree with um, Pastor Guillaume again. And I, I believe we have the, right, uh, uh, the, good, the best man with us this morning, you know, uh, sharing with the, the health aspect of meat eating. And, and just to piggyback on what he's saying, the aspect of new start, also has to deal with uh, with our temperance, you know, and we we don't as Adventists promote meat eating per se, um, but we do allow persons to have the choice, you know, to eat the meats that are clean and also to eat the meat with moderation, and this is where the the, the preferred choice comes in that you eat the meat with uh, moderation. Don't abuse it. You know, do your best to, to prepare it. Prepare it well and by God's grace you can eat all of it. But, but right. Pastor, let, let me just add to this that science is now proven that what is considered as clean is becoming unsafe. All right. 
uh-huh. for human consumption. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm yeah? listening. So, when you look at the current farming techniques that, is, that are used, it encourages quick production, rapid growth, and development of those animals that we consider to be clean. Right. Also, many of the animals that are considered clean mm-hmm. are injected or fed antibiotics, chemicals, and growth stimulating and digestive aid enzymes. Right. Many animals, and you know, it's interesting that when I was doing my research, I saw Ellen White spoke about those things long, long years ago, okay. and we are seeing it happening today. Right. Yeah, that many animals are traumatized even before they are slaughtered, resulting in the release of toxins and hormones that alter the quality of the meat before it reaches the consumer. Mm -hmm. So even though God says, yes, um, he has allowed us to eat meat, uh we must be mindful that today, that which God has declared as clean is becoming unsafe for our help. Amen. Right. And, and, and Pastor, I like the way you shared it. You're not saying that it has become unclean, but unsafe. 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 And yeah. that is very important for us to get. And I hope that our um, viewing audience would listen to the choice, choice of words um, by the expert Have mercy. <laughs> um, in the area. So, so what God has defined as clean mm-hmm. Does not become unclean by we saying it's unclean. Mm-hmm. Only he can decide that. That's right. But it's becoming unsafe mm-hmm. because of the techniques like what passed. Pass yeah. Powerful man. Powerful. Well, just I to think, add. I sorry. Think, just to Michael, add. I think mm-hmm. um, the the technical guys need to create um, some meme or some lo- slogan mm. on that. You know, I have and mercy. post that on Facebook, man. Mercy. That's a powerful point. I have mercy. So yeah. Ahead. Just to add, um, just a little um, addition. That you know, persons should, if they want to, if they want to partake of of the clean meats, I, I would say, rear your own. You know, right. do yeah, you, um, so that you would um, uh, get rid of the the, the 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 estrogen and all the toxins and all all of those unclean practices or unhealthy practices that the 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 marketers are are, are doing these days for fast production and rapid production. Um, so that you know, you take your time, you grow your very own, and you eat your very own so without. You, so, you, so, so you give your chicken water, grass, and and, and that's and that's, that's right. Mercy, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, got you, got you, got you. And, and that's why, that's why. All you right. see, Pastor, we could spend a lot of time on this question because that's yeah. why the church promotes a plant-based mm-hmm. diet right. mm-hmm. because it has excellent health benefits. That's right. Now, science is now proven that a plant-based diet lowers the risk of cancer because it contains antioxidants. Antioxidants help to lower um, the risk for cancer. It blocks carcinogen from affecting the cells. And uh, it suppresses. So when we we eat a plant-based diet, it suppresses the malignant cells because we all have cancer cells. Mm. But it's based on our lifestyle, what we eat. That's what right. we drink, what we do, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. can stimulate those cells and they can become, you know, they can take control of our bodies and, you know, affect our health. That's right. So it suppresses the malignant cells and it fights pesticides. Uh, plant, plants, they have the ability to fight pesticides and insecticides because they have what mm-hmm. is called phytochemicals. That's right. Yeah? So they have that phytochemicals that are destroyed it is destroyed when it is refined when the food is refined so it is it is best that when we are consuming those plant-based foods mm, that we try as much as possible to consume them in the natural, natural state, state so we can get the benefits from amen them. all right thank amen. you so much pastor amen and um we have rosalind saying so true we have richard nichols saying doctors say to stay sorry to avoid eating beef Okay. All right. And we have Richard Nichols saying, avoid red meat. And all of these are good counsel. We'll come back because, pastors, um, I have more questions for you. I okay. just start bowling, you know, man. Okay, okay. So I have more questions for you. Um, when we come back, we, I'm, I'm going to ask my viewing audience to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 9, 3, and 4. 
and 1 Timothy 4, 4 and 5. We won't have the time to read it mm -hmm. um, because it's already um, 3 minutes to 12. Mm -hmm. So we only have about 33 minutes left. Have mercy. For, um, and we have a lot of questions. Have mercy. So therefore, um, we'll be asking our guests to, um, you know, just comment um, a little on those two passages. But at this time, we will take a break to, you know, to just smooth our hearts and, um, you know, calm our nerves with special music. Amen. Amen. Look for it. Prepare for it. Plan for it. What is it? It's Megafest 2021. Come, Come join, join us. us. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. Though tears may descend from my face, I know there'll be gladness and dancing. my brother indeed there is no debate 
We serve a good, a good and a fantastic God. Pastors, I am Amen. back with you. Um, Genesis chapter 9, verse 3 and 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Please comment on the on, on these passages. Pastor um, Diabo, uh, take the first me, knock of the ball. Please permit me to read the, the text just for clarity. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 9 and verse, verses 3 and 4, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as a green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So God, after the flood, had indicated, um, well, even long before, um, as Pastor Guillaume said earlier in, in, in Genesis chapter 7, the clear distinction was made um, of which meat were clean and which were unclean. They, were, they, were, they went in the ark by sevens, those that were clean, and the, the, the unclean went in by one pair. And um, that is seven pairs, 14 clean meats, and uh, uh, meat that were considered clean. And um, one pair, two, were entered into the ark as uh, unclean. Now, because of, of, of the flood, and you know vegetation being diminished some somewhat god indicated to the to noah and his family that he had given them you know the proper clean meat to eat so this is not to be taken literally that every moving thing liveth that that liveth shall be eaten shall be shall be meat for you this is not to be taken literally because men, women, boys and girls are living, moving beings as well. And we not to eat them. It was just specifically stating of the clean meats that God had already indicated that were clean. And yes, they can be eaten. All right, all right. Now, um, Pastor Guillaume, just try to go through yours quickly. Because we have some quite a few more questions here that I need to bowl to you guys. All right, so in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 3 and 4, I want to read the text. It says, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Four four and five. And five. Uh-huh. It says, For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Oh Lord. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, we must, you know, you see, context determine meaning, mm-hmm. and um, this passage must be taken into context. So what was happening here is that Paul was um, debunking those Gnostic theories that existed there um, in regards to marriage and uh, also abstaining from, from meats, and meats here could also mean food. So Paul was reminding his readers that everything that was created by God at creation was good for its purpose. Notice that it was good That's for right. its purpose. That's right. So if verse 4 were meant to be all-inclusive, we should be able to eat even poisonous plants and animals oh, as long as we receive them with thanksgiving, oh, prayer, mercy. and the word of God. And they will be miraculously transformed and be made edible. Mm, This is not what Paul is saying here. So the the, the point is that one cannot prey on meats that are unclean Mm. and expect it to become clean. We cannot sanctify anything. God is the one that has already stated what is clean and what is unclean. It's only God that can sanctify and I'm, I'm not saying here that we should not pray before we eat, but we must remember that what we eat and what we drink must give glory to God. So what God expects us, um, he expects us to give him thanks before we eat, as I said before. And our prayers is not what makes what we eat good that comes by that must come by obedience Amen. to the word of God. Amen. So you must bear in mind, must bear in mind, 
that for us as Christians, you know, it was interesting when I came across this statement that it says that eating and drinking are not just mere secular activities. All right. <laughs> it's not just mere secular activities. So <clears throat> this is saying here that it does not give us a license to just eat what we want and drink what we want. Correct. So that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, mm -hmm. for whatever we eat and whatever we drink, whatever we do, should not be to the glory of self. That's right. Or our own desires, our own passion. No. But it should be to the, the glory, glory of God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. And Sister Veronica Samuel, we see you in the chat. And um, we would be praying for you. Sister Veronica is not doing too well. And we want to acknowledge her and thank her for still viewing. Amen. Even though she's not, you know, a hundred percent. I see her friend Alicia Stephen is giving that kind of support, that friendly Amen. support. Sister um Stephen, good job. Good, Amen. Praise good the job. Lord. Now, um, pastors, um just wanna um uh yes or no answer. Mm -hmm. Does Ellen G. White recommend no meat eaten at all? You know, which says don't eat meat totally. Who want to go for that one? Uh, first of all, well, let me <laughs> comment. First of all, Ellen White, um, I, I, I trust and believe that uh, she would have given good counsel uh, for the church. And in this case, uh, for her to recommend no meat eating at all, is is somewhat a little contradiction to the Bible who would the, the, that would have given um, permission or allowance to eat clean meat. No, her say, her her statement here meaning no meat eaten at all is a is a direct contradiction to the Bible, which states that we can eat clean meats. However, if she's saying eat no unclean meats then I would agree with Sister Ellen White here. Um, and, and if she recommends that we eat uh, no meat, it has to be with reason, meaning that she, as, as does the church, to um, uh, promote the original diet, right. I, I would agree with Sister right. Ellen White here. And I believe this is where um, I believe this is where she was, she was leading. If she's saying, don't eat meat at all, she's encouraging us to eat or to partake of the healthy, original diet God would have given us in the beginning. And also there are some um, circumstances as it was in Genesis chapter 9, after the flood, when, uh, well, not in this case, not in this case. My, my apologies. Not in this case. So, okay. so, so Pastor, you, you, you have given the preface, but I want Pastor Guillaume to answer me direct. Mm -hmm. um, you you, you kind of run around it, but I want a direct uh, answer. Does Mrs. White recommend no meat eating? Yes or no? I, I, I wouldn't be able to give you an absolute answer. Mm -hmm. But here I can see that based on my reading, it appears as though... Ellen White would have given um, permission, let me put that way, to eat meat in extenuating circumstances. So in cases of travel, um, poverty of some church members, that they really, really can't afford a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a transition with a new cook, because in her case, um, it, it, the record showed that Ellen White she was not a, a good cook. So she had someone cooking for her. And, um, you know, she is saying here that in a, in a case where you have a transition with a new cook or in therapeutic use in medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. So there's a statement here that I found very interesting um, from Council on Diet. Um, those of you on online can take note of it, Councils on Diet. Um, page 394, 395, she says, a meat diet is not the most wholesome of diet. She says, yet I would not 
take the position that meat should be discarded by everyone. Those who have feeble digestive organs can often use meat when they cannot eat vegetables, mm -hmm. fruits, or porridge. That's however, right. Pastor, mm -hmm. however, when you read many of Ellen White's councils, Council on Health, Ministry of Healing, um, Testimonies to the Church, um, Diets on, 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 on Foods, she strongly advocates a plant-based diet and she counsels that the eating of meat can debilitate our moral, physical, and uh, spiritual well-being. So here's a statement that she says in Council on Diet and Food, page 430, she says, concerning flesh meat, we can all say, let it alone. She says, my position now, in the same book, page 410, she says, my position now is to let meet all together alone, it will be hard for some to do this, as hard as for the rum drinker to forsake his dram. But they would be better for the change. I want to read just one more statement. She says in councils on diet and food, she says vegetables, fruits, and grains should compose our diet. Not an ounce of flesh meat should enter our stomachs. The Eating of flesh is unnatural. We are to return to God's original That's purpose right. in the creation of man. So Amen. even though it appears as though she would have, she's not absolute, in other words. Yeah, not absolute. She's saying here that we should avoid. All right. She's strongly advocating yeah. that we should avoid the eating of meat. Okay. Amen. Well, I will come again a little because I want us to spend some time here. So I've got I've got the questions to mm -hmm. grab mm -hmm. that that the answer no problem. I desire from the two of you. Um, mm -hmm. But let's go to um, those online. Tracy Thompson says, "Please pray for me this morning, struggling um, a little bit. Please pray that God will send me some help to get my baby to get my baby so um, so much. Please, please, please." All right, so Pastor, let's just remember that so at the end we can pray. No problem. And um, we have, and um, Tracy, again, our numbers are in the chat. You just feel free to call these numbers at any time um, so that there'll be somebody who will answer and who can pray for you Amen. and with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're asking the gentleman, just put the numbers in the chat so that Tracy could get the number and call immediately. We mm. have KD says, very informative session. As important as it is to be vigilant or mindful as to what we put in our bodies, it is equally important to be careful as what comes out. Mm -hmm. When we eat healthily, our minds will be healthy. Our thoughts, even our actions and words will be healthy Amen. by the grace of God. Oh, yeah. uh, construct and construct or constructive as well. That's right. What defies a man? Is not what goes in, however, what comes out. Amen. All right. And Sister Veronica Samuel is really Sister Cado. Um, so she's asking us, to, that's something that we know her as, <laughs> um, to please pray for her. No problem. All right. Now, um, saints of God, number, number um, seven. Number seven. Those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, like us, Pastor Guillaume, Pastor Diabo, yes. Sister Cardo, Sister Tracy, Sister KD, um, and so forth. And all, all those 69 of you who are watching, meat eating will eventually be done away with. Mm -hmm. Flesh will cease to, be, to form part of the diet. We should ever keep this in view. And however, to work Stead, steadily towards it. That is the book Councils on Diets on, Diet on Foods, page 8380. Is it possible, pastors, for a meat-eating believer to enter the kingdom of God? That's a, a very pointed question. Pastor, I need my answer to and answer me, pastors. Is it possible for a meat-eating believer to enter the kingdom of God? Yes. I say yes. All right. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's God who is doing the saving and not the meat. 
All right. But the meat is not good. No, 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 no. no. Well, if he's eating unclean meat, or she's eating unclean meat, then they're in, she, he or she is in direct contradiction to God's word. Okay. However, if he or she is partaking of clean meat... So, so, so let, let's take you back to the time, Pastor. I, uh -huh. I mean, I'm mean, putting you on the defense, but let's no, no, take you no. back to the time. So you are telling me mm -hmm. that an individual who is eating unclean meat mm -hmm. and knows that it is wrong to do, right. that individual is not going to heaven. That individual is under condemnation. And... For him to, to or her to come out of that, he needs to or she needs to stop what they're, they're doing that is in contradiction to God's word. Remember, God wants to save everybody. All right. Whether you're smoking, you're drinking, you're reveling, he wants to save you. Okay. And he cannot save you in the sin you're committing, be it meat eating or not. Mm -hmm. He wants to save you from sin. And he wants to save you in his eternal kingdom. So... God is expecting us to partake of clean meat. And, 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 and as, as was quoted, there's coming a time um, when, according to Ellen White, it would be done away with. And so the emphasis here, more or less for me, is not to you know, focus on, 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 on the, the meat eating per se, but is to focus on making myself right. To, to receive Jesus, or for Jesus to receive me. When he comes. All right. Um, just before I take you past the game, I want to read something here. <laughs> um, I want to read it. I want to read it. Um, Anderson Felix says, Shall we use flesh food? Responsibility of pastors. Of ministers. Of no. ministers. Um, let's go um, back down. I was reading something on the screen. Um, so let's... Because um, I need to read that one for the pastors. All right, guys. Can you help me? Um... Um, Anderson Felix's um, quote, um, quotation. Thank you so much. Shall we use flesh foods? Responsibility of ministers, our ministers, who know the truth, should arouse the people from their paralyzed condition and lead them to put away those things that create an appetite for flesh meat. If, if they neglect to reform, they will lose spiritual power and become more and more depaced by sin. Um, by sinful things. Um, that's a quotation from Ellen G. White. Now, pastors, we're getting hot in this place. Mm -hmm. Very soon, the AC car keep us cool anymore. Uh, mercy. Pastor Guillaume, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor Guillaume. No, I concur with the... With the um, yeah, with he's the, correct. With the brother. Yeah, I yeah, concur because Ellen White speaks to us as ministers right. uh -huh. and uh, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. as pastors to be yes. an example you know, I, I know that, you know, we have, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, sometimes we may have divided um, convictions on those things, mm -hmm. but truth is always truth. That's right. right. Yeah, truth is truth. And um, right. as pastors, our responsibility is to uplift the truth, yeah, of the word and also of the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So where the, where the brother quoted from was from the spirit of prophecy. Amen. And that speaks directly to us. So it mm -hmm. therefore means that um, the members can arise higher than the leaders. So we yeah. have to ensure that we set the example as well. Amen. Yep. You know? yep. Amen. But to go back to the question that you um, asked there, um, I would not give my view on it, mm -hmm. but I just want to read a statement here from Ellen Y that I think explains what she's saying here. She says here, it is not the chief end of man to gratify his appetite. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Appetite is what causes us to end up where we are now. All That's right. right. Yeah? That's All right. right. So she says there are physical wants to be supplied. But because of this, but because of this, is it necessary that man shall be controlled by appetite? Hmm. Will the people who are seeking to become holy, mm -hmm. pure, refined, that they may be introduced into the society of heavenly angels, continue to take the life of God's creatures mm. and enjoy the flesh as a luxury. Mm -hmm. mm. From what the Lord has shown me, this order of things will be changed. That's right. Yeah? In an, so sometimes we just read that statement there and we stop there. But we need to read further down That's so right. we can get the context mm -hmm. in which she's talking about. 
Some people use the statement to say that if you eat meat, you can't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No. Um, based on mm -hmm. what Pastor was saying. As a matter of fact, let me finish with the statement. She says, this order of things will be changed and God's peculiar people will exercise temperance mm. in all things. That's right. And temperance means the moderate use of that which is good mm -hmm. and abstinence or abstaining from that right. which is bad, harmful. That's right. Yeah? So, in line with what Pastor um, Diabo was saying um, a while ago, if a person eats unclean meat, then they are violating the health laws. That's right. right. And they are also violating the commandments. Amen. Because right. what they're doing here is that they're killing themselves. Mm -hmm. And a person who eats clean meat, but they're eating it because, you know, it's a luxury to them. They can't do it. Or there are some persons who will tell you, I cannot do away with meat. Mm -hmm. They have become addicted to it. <laughs> yeah? And you can dare give them a plate of food without meat because they're eating it. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's about the appetite. Yes. So here, Ellen White is speaking specifically in regards to our appetite. We should not allow our appetite to take control of us. Control us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. To control us to the point where we lose our soul's salvation. Okay. So the quotation I read here, those of you who may want to find it, is in Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene, page 48, or Council on Health, page 116. Mm -hmm. You can find it and read Amen. for yourself. And, and I think, Ella, based on what I'm getting from the two of you, um, discipline is the key. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. what God wants to Amen. Us, for us to be Amen. disciplined individuals so that we and are moderate. not controlled by feelings or emotions. That's right. We are controlled by principles. That's right. That's All right. right. Amen. Um, Amen. Then Amen. we have KD saying, replying to Anderson, I endorse no excuses to be made or compromised. With the advice, then no pastor should be consuming meat. Okay. <laughs> lead, lead by example, however, it requires okay. discipline and okay. obedience to the spirit oh, yes, of yes. prophecy. Uh, I don't think meat eating is a prerequisite for, he, um, for getting to heaven as keeping the Ten Commandment is. Mm -hmm. All right, that's Spice G. Alexis. Okay. Again, we share our views, we share um, what we think, mm -hmm. um, but again, we have the two men of God to guide us and direct us um, <laughs> in blessing. that um, regard. I blessing. only have about eight minutes left, pastors. Okay. And I have two important questions. I cannot leave here mm -hmm. without the two of you answering those questions. Okay. The, f the other one is, and the first one out of the two is, a diet of flesh, mm -hmm. meat, and that's Mrs. White again speaking uh -huh. from the book, Councils on, di um, on Diets and Food, page 382. She's saying a diet of um, flesh meats tend to develop animalism. Mm -hmm. Men, mm -hmm. I want to know what that is. Okay. Development of animalism, she says, lessens spirituality, mm -hmm. rendering the mind incapable of understanding truth. Men, tell me, tell our viewing audience, what is animalism? <laughs> and how does that affect the Christian lifestyle? Will I, if I eat a cow, will I moo like a cow? Mm -hmm. You know, um, what is animalism? Well, animalism here has to do with, um, it can affect our Christian lifestyle, as she says. And um, it's uncontrollable behaviors and passions and desires. Right. Because as I said earlier, there are some persons who seem to be so addicted to meat eating, mm -hmm. that they will go all out to ensure that they they eat it, even though they even to their own detriment. That's right. right. Yeah, and uh, she's saying here that this can cause persons to become aggressive mm -hmm. and hostile, mm -hmm. and uh, it can also affect the way they think. So there's That's a statement right. here that I want to read from her. I want to back it up with a statement here from Consuls on Diet and Foods. All right, page three three nine. Um, she says here on 390 to 391, she says, God wants, she's speaking about flesh, food, and clear thinking. She mm -hmm. says, God wants the perceptive faculties of his people to be clear and capable of hard work. But if you are living on a flesh diet, you need not expect that your mind will be fruitful. Mm -hmm. The thoughts must be cleansed then the blessing of God will rest upon his people. We want them to understand 
that the flesh of animals is not the proper food for them to eat. Such a diet cultivates the animal passion in them and in their children. God wants us to educate our children in right habits of eating, dressing, and walking. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. Dia, Pastor Diabo, do you want to add to this? I, I believe uh, Pastor Guillaume uh, hit it on the nail. He drove it straight home. Um, however, the question is uh, animalism, and he rightly um, cleared, cleared, cleared the air on that. And we are encouraged, you know, again and again to be moderate um, and, and strike a balance between uh, the meat you eat and, you know, the, to, to be healthy. We are to be healthy people, a healthy people for Jesus. And I agree with all of the, the, the statements that Pastor Guillaume would have made. Yes. Yes. And actually, um, Pastor, just to go a little further with what you have shared, mm -hmm. um, the diseases that affect the Egyptians should not be affecting the Israelites. Should, should not be. Should not be. Antonio Walker is saying, just, we are just on the, the borders of Canaan. Mm -hmm. However, thousands were destroyed there because of flesh. Mm -hmm. History does repeat itself. Mm -hmm. Anderson Fields is saying the same thing that God wanted to do for Israel coming out of Egypt mm -hmm. is what he's trying to do for his church today. Amen. Moving them away from a flesh diet. Okay. When, an, when a believer has accepted the saving grace of Jesus, the Holy Spirit would, be, would lead them into doing away with negative practices that will hinder them from eating. I like that. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts Amen. us Amen. and convinces us of sin. Mm -hmm. And whatever that is in us, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit would lead us to removing it. Yes. Uh, but we must be disciplined enough to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, pastors, we cannot take the last question. Um, it has to do with cancers and tumors and these things. I wanted to know if meat eating um, leads to these things. But pastors... Thank you so much for being with me today on Pastor's Corner. Man, I had fun. I really enjoyed um, studying and going through the Word of God and going through the comments that our audience would have left and shared with us. Audience, thank you so much, so much for being with us. Um, we're back on tonight, um, I think at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're asking you um, to invite somebody, somebody who did not hear it today. Let them know that there's a word for them. Amen. Um, let them know that God wants to speak to them again this evening. So join us again at 8 p.m. for past, um, Pastor's Corner again. Pastor Diabo, may God bless you on your ministry. May God continue enlarging your territory. Um, Pastor Guillaume, you are the one tasked with this responsibility <laughs> to lead the health work on the island. May God bless you as you lead. May he grant you the power of the Holy Spirit as you try to convert us to follow in the will Amen. of the living God. Let's Amen. pray. Amen. Loving Father, Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your men. Lord, you have called them and Lord, they spoke to our hearts. I pray, Lord, that we would say that our hearts yet burned within us and that we will endeavor to move towards a change. Father, we present Sister Tracy before you. Lord, she is not doing too well, or her baby. I pray, oh God, you know what the situation is. We pray, Lord, that you come through for them Amen. in a way that only you can come through. Amen. Father, we pray for Sister Cador, Lord, who has this ailment. I pray, oh God, that even as we speak, a medical missionary, somebody would have heard um, that she needs prayer. They would have read in the chat and they would reach out to her. Father, I pray, oh God, Lord, do what you do best. Take care of your people. And Lord, we pray for those in Haiti. Lord, at this time, Lord, going through the ordeal or the aftermath of this um, earthquake. 
Father, we pray for those in Afghanistan at this present time. We pray for those all around the world, yes, Lord, Lord, with the challenges of COVID. Father, I pray, oh God, as these challenges, Lord, unsettle people. Settle people in your truth. Settle people in your word. That men and women, Father, their hearts will be melted. Their hearts will be softened to listen and hear from your word. Father, bless us, Father. And we pray that when you come, save us in your kingdom. Yes, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Uh, pastors, again, may God bless you. And I pray that um, God would have used us um, to win other persons for him. May God bless you. May God bless everybody. And see you next week, Tuesday, um, for another episode of Pastor's Corner.